Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Michelle Smith. I'm a registered dietitian and also a certified lifestyle coach. I'm here today on behalf of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. Our presentation for today is healthy holiday eating. So our agenda for today, I'd like to make it a little bit different than usual, rather than just sitting here presenting slides to you. Um, I hope that you'll take advantage of the fact that I'd like you to be engaged with me. And I'd like to ask you to um, put some common uh, challenges into the chat box so that we can uh, take a look at these together because some of the challenges that may I may come up with during the holidays may be different than what you think of. So it'd be super helpful if you would help out today and participate during this presentation. So our agenda is to identify our personal challenges. What are common challenges that we face during the holidays and steps or ways to overcome those challenges. And then we're gonna talk about <clears throat> how it's not just about nutrition or eating, but it's a synergy of sleep, stress, of course, and nutrition and physical activity. So it's important to keep in mind that these all work together. They work hand in hand. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'd like to do, hopefully you have access to a pen and some paper, but I'd like you to have a pen and paper nearby. And I'm going to ask you to make a list of what you think your common challenges or barriers are over the holidays. I'd like to take about 30 seconds to give you all just some time to think and reflect um, back on previous holidays and what tends to be your biggest challenge or barrier. <clears throat> so make a list. And it doesn't have to be your challenge per se. It could be a challenge of somebody else's or something that you've heard somebody mention. And please put these in the chat box. Thank you. Also, there will be hopefully um, room at the end of the presentation to go over any questions that you may have. But right now, I'd like you just to place in the chat box some of the common challenges or barriers that you may face. <clears throat> Love it. Awesome. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for doing this. Okay. So I see, fantastic. I see uh, making healthy foods for family, overindulging, sweet tooth, the cookies, portions. Let's see, too many treats and trying to cook for a group and having lots of treats and leftovers. That's a good one, yeah. These are all perfect, being patient, larger servings, beautiful, you guys did a great job. Okay, so now that you've written down these challenges and now you, um, and you can probably <clears throat> see some of these other challenges that people have posted, is it something that you may share? So portions, sweets, almost anything sweet. Okay, perfect. Thank you all so much for putting those down. Now, what we're going to do is make a plan. So now that we know what our challenges are, what I'd like you to do today is walk away with a plan. How are you going to manage this challenge? So for example, let's say we all have a sweet tooth, okay? <clears throat> so maybe that's the thing we're going to work on. And the key here isn't to deprive yourself of those things that you enjoy. It's to give yourself permission of those sweets, so for example, we decide on the sweets. So we're going to set what we call SMART goals. So write it down. And the purpose of writing it down is it will hold you accountable. Research shows that if you write down your plan or your SMART goal, you're more successful because you're putting a plan in place. Those who plan are successful. Those who don't plan, plan are basically, those who fail to plan will fail. <clears throat> I didn't say that right, but you know what I mean? So SMART goals. So for example, let's say 
for example, one of my biggest barriers over the holidays is we tend to eat out more often because we're so busy and we're not taking the time to eat properly. So I always suggest if, if eating out is a barrier for you or a challenge, know what the menu is ahead of time. Go in with a plan, fill up on your vegetables, um, choose less, choose lower calorie foods, more nutrient dense foods. Or if let's say someone didn't mention alcohol or social drinking, um, typically I don't, I'm not a, I don't drink alcohol, but over the holidays, I find that uh, more alcohol is available. So maybe try to stay hydrated with water or seltzers or go in with the plan of, you know, one and done mentality. <clears throat> portions, we, somebody mentioned portions. So use the plate method and we'll go over that in a moment to design your plate or know what appropriate portions are. So remember if you, um, if portions were, was one of your barriers, write it down and then be specific. How are you going to control your portions or manage your portions? How are you going to measure that? So that's where that plate method could come in handy, or I'll go over some simple ways to, um, to assess if your portions are appropriate. And then ask yourself, is it achievable? Um, is, are these goals realistic and are they timely? So you may, may want to say, you know, you want to practice this over the um, period of the month of December. Me personally, I find that it doesn't end at Christmas. Then we have New Year's and then, you know, it, it keeps going. It's February and then March and we roll into Easter because it's winter time. So it's never just November and December. It could just carry over into the new year. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to say here is write down what your challenge is and then be specific on how you're going to approach that challenge. Like, for example, if I choose to fit in more physical activity, so then I'll be specific. So what do I enjoy doing? I enjoy doing yoga or bicycling or going to the gym. And so then the, the way to make it measurable is I'll um, and make sure it's achievable is I'll put it in my calendar and I'll just maybe say, okay, try to fit in 30 minutes, five days a week. And what type of activity will I perform? So again, that will just make sure that I follow through with my plan. That's the biggest thing is following through with your plan to ensure that you are successful. All right, so let's talk about not just eating, but other things that can affect other lifestyle habits that, that can affect our eating habits. So believe it or not, sleep. So I know we talked about smart goals and food and nutrition and activity, but um, sleep is something that you might want to work on during the holidays. There are a lot of people who are sleep deprived and don't realize it. Let me tell you a secret. You can't make up for the lack of sleep. So if you're sleep deprived, that can never be made up. So the key is, is to work on sleep habits, sleep hygiene, going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time every morning, getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Let me tell you, if you do not get enough sleep, it affects your central nervous system. It affects your hormones it affects your major organs. <clears throat> so for example, if we're sleep deprived, we're going to be producing more cortisol levels, blood sugar is going to be elevated. We could become, ins we could become insulin resistant. Uh, we may be less vulnerable to stress, we may be more vulnerable to stress, more irritable, and also sleep deprived people, um, their hormones, their ghrelin, which is a hormone that tells us when we're hungry and our leptin, which tells us when we're full, those hormones can be off key. So it's hard to regulate those. So we, those of us who are sleep deprived may find that we're constantly nibbling or constantly hungry throughout the day because we're not able to identify if we're satisfied. We might just be eating for energy. So it's super important to get adequate sleep and also to help keep your immune system strong. So if, if it's not even about the food, but how are you sleeping? That could be something just to work on for the month of December. 
or extend it into the new year, into the new year. Because once we start with that, then we can manage everything else. I can't tell you how many clients I have that have a difficult time with sleep and have a hard time moving forward into, into managing their eating habits until they manage their sleeping habits. So super important. All right, besides sleep, managing stress. <clears throat> how do you manage stress? So again, if you find that work is very stressful or you're having a hard time saying no or setting limits or prioritizing, make time for yourself. Develop some techniques that help you manage stress, whether it's deep breathing, which is inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth, whether it's visualization techniques where you close your eyes and you go to your happy place and you use your senses while you're there, or progressive relaxation, that's where you would contract and relax muscles. So if you have tension in your head, neck and shoulders from working at the computer all day, you could um, do things where you're contracting and relaxing your shoulders, your hands, your face. So anything that will help you manage stress. And so a lot of these things are free. There's no side effects and you can pull them out at any time. There's some great apps out there. Um, one's called Headspace or Calm. So again, if you're finding that you're on under ongoing stress and you're really having a hard time uh, <clears throat> managing your eating habits or managing your sleep because of stress, because you're ruminating, it's super important to hone in on this and come up with a plan. How am I going to manage my stress? And again, like I said, whether it's setting limits, prioritizing, and lower your expectations of yourself and others. Try not to take on too much. Okay, so these are just some suggestions. And remember, use the SMART goals to help you. Oops. All right, and then focus on family and friends. What's the purpose of the holidays? You know. Is it really all about the food? I can't tell you how many people actually stress out about the holidays, not necessarily because of the food, but because of being around people. So there are people who really struggle with what we call social anxiety. I have patients who tell me that they're afraid to go to the social setting. And then what will happen is subconsciously, they'll end up standing in front of, for lack of a better example, I have one client who will stand in front of the bread basket and literally eat that entire basket of bread because they are nervous, they are uncomfortable, they are anxious. So it's super important to identify, are you that kind of individual who is a um, compulsive eater or who, who eats to manage their mood or their anxiety? So step back and ask yourself, how can you embrace this, this time and really understand that it's there to be, you're there to be present for your family, maybe practice active listening, um, make a list of whom you are grateful for. If you're nervous about being around certain people, then maybe stay closer to those who make you feel comfortable. And again, remember, what is the meaning of the holiday? What are we celebrating? Um, and then show that you care and that you're there for them. So it's not always about the food, you know, it's more about family and friends. So again, if this is something that is a challenge for you, definitely write it down and put a plan in place as far as how can you reduce your anxiety if, if you're fearful of being in that situation. Okay, so now stay nourished and hydrated. I can't tell you how many people I hear say, oh, I'm not going to eat anything because I'm really looking forward to that meal. And, and I really want to be able to um, enjoy the meal. But how many of you can really say you can go all day without eating and then you can get there and eat slowly and mindfully and stop when you're satisfied? So the purpose of staying nourished and hydrated, what I'm trying to get at is stay fueled. It makes you easy. It makes it easier for you to control portions and choices. Don't skip meals. So know what time the meal will be served. Perfect example. I went to my, um, <clears throat> aunt, my actually my husband's aunts for uh, Thanksgiving and my mother-in-law, which is her sister, usually serves 
dinner around two in the afternoon. So I just assumed the same thing that they served dinner around two. Well, I ate breakfast. I was fueled. I was hydrated and I get there and they served appetizers. So I said, you know, I'm going to hold off on the appetizers because I really want to enjoy the meal at two. Cause I find if I eat appetizers before I eat, I don't have any room for my meal. So you may understand what I'm talking about. So I held off on the appetizers. Well, they put them all away. Well, guess what? The meal wasn't until seven o'clock at night. I was starving, not a good feeling. And do you think that I could make wise choices? Do you think I could control my portions? And do you think I could eat slowly? No. So this is not the time to skip meals. Stay fueled, stay hydrated. Space out your meals. You can try to eat, you know, between three to five hours. Try not to go more than four and a half to five hours without a meal or a snack. And what I mean by space out desserts, if you're going to have your big meal, maybe give um, dessert, you know, give some time before you have dessert, maybe give your body at least two hours to digest the, the lunch or the dinner or whatever you have, and then allow yourself to have the dessert and eat until you're satisfied. And I'll, we'll go over that in a moment. Will you, we'll take a look at the hunger fullness scale and how to identify when you're satisfied. Try not to eat until you're stuffed. Uh, remember to stay hydrated because thirst can be mis mistaken for hunger. And remember to choose calorie-free beverages, more like water or seltzers. All right, so here's an example of a hunger fullness scale. You can Google this, you can find this online. At the end of the presentation, you'll see I have a resource that feel free to take a picture of it with your phone and you can look up this uh, link. But basically the hunger fullness scale, what it is is empty is when basically zero is empty and 10 is when you're miserably stuffed to where the, to the point where you're nauseous and feel like you're going to get sick. So the agenda here is to try to keep your hunger in the moderate um, phase between three and seven. So, you know, when you're lightly hungry around three, then maybe introduce something. Um, and when you're eating, try to eat until you're lightly full or satisfied. Try not to get to the point where you're full. And when you do this, remember this takes time, this takes practice. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with this and you've never tried this, I highly recommend looking into intuitive eating. It's an intuitive eating workbook and it helps you practice intuitive eating and the hunger fullness scale because a lot of us are not familiar with this and a lot of us don't pay attention to this. But guess what? Eating is intuitive and we can identify when we're satisfied. I think the problem gets to be is that what the problem tends to be is that we're afraid that we, need, we may not be able to eat later on. But if you can remind yourself that, okay, eat till you're satisfied, it's okay if you get hungry later, it's not a problem. You have permission to eat. I think a lot of times people just feel like this is their last meal and they have to eat it all because they'll never get it again. Okay. So try to use the scale to your advantage. So again, if you, you find that you are one that tends to overeat or eat till you're stuffed, maybe practice this before the, um, the big feast for lack of a better term. Another great method is to use the plate method. So I'm sure you've heard of this, but Phil, so when you're at that um, meal with your family, try to make your plate colorful. 50% of that plate or half of that plate should be filled with vegetables. I know sometimes that can be hard to do. Um, at Thanksgiving, it was nice to see at our Thanksgiving, there were at least three choices of vegetables. So I could fill half my plate with vegetables. So those are what we call nutrient dense foods. There's not a lot of calories, but there's a lot of nutrients. And then one quarter of your plate should be starch or grain. And then the other quarter is your protein. Typically at some of these meals, there isn't any fruit or dairy. Um, and we tend to have a very high carbohydrate meal, but see if you can practice that. More vegetables and less starches. <clears throat> so that's another uh, great skill to practice and work up to. Oops. All right, so moderation, not deprivation. So here's a scoop. Uh, a lot of, of Americans, or let's say just people, we're labeling food as bad, 
um, or we shouldn't eat it. And the problem with that is when we label food as bad or we don't allow ourselves to eat foods we enjoy, we're more apt to overindulge in it, especially on days like this. So the key is, is to give yourself permission to eat what you enjoy. If you find that you're one that is constantly dieting and depriving yourself of foods you enjoy, I highly recommend um, seeking support either through a dietitian or work on what we call intuitive eating. There's an intuitive eating workbook that I'll share with you in a moment. Um, but if we deprive ourselves of foods or label foods as bad, again, we're going to want it even more. All right. So there's a balance. There's moderation. Don't avoid your favorite high calorie foods, especially on these days. So for instance, someone mentioned cookies. If you love cookies, allow yourself to have them. Give yourself permission to have them. Maybe ask yourself, well, how many would I have before? How many cookies did I have last year? You know, this year. So think of it as look, making baby steps. Uh, for instance, I love certain pies. So if there's, let's say, um, a lemon meringue pie that I like, or an apple pie and a pumpkin pie, well, which one is my favorite? And maybe it's lemon and pumpkin. So maybe I'll have a small sliver of each versus two large slices of each. So again, it's asking yourself, what would you do before? And what can you do differently this time? And give yourself permission to eat those foods that you enjoy so that it doesn't set you up to overindulge. And there are people who may binge too. And that's a whole different um presentation. And again, if you're finding that you're struggling with binge eating or emotional eating, definitely seek support. So love it or leave it. So like I said, if you love it, then eat it and just control the portions. <clears throat> no, you know, scan the menu, see what's available. Um, you know, what foods are available that you wouldn't typically have. So again, like I never have pumpkin pie outside of Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I'm going to give myself permission to have that and maybe lemon meringue as well. And if they're both there, I'm going to give myself a small sliver of each and I'm going to eat it slowly and I'm going to eat it mindfully. So that's another thing to pay attention to is um, the, the, the pace at which you eat food and are you present when you're eating it? And that's something that, again, you can learn through intuitive eating, but um, Pay attention to when you're eating your meal and, you know, do you see the food? Do you smell it? Are you tasting it? Are you taking small bites? Is it taking at least 30 minutes? You know how long it takes to put a meal together. Sometimes it can take people an entire work week to put a meal together and we're done in literally 10 minutes. So definitely pace yourself, take smaller bites and really enjoy the food food, but enjoy those things that you love. If you don't care for it, for instance, I don't care for pecan pie. And a lot of times people will, you know, encourage me to eat it or to taste it. I'd rather not have it. I'd rather have the lemon ring or, or let's say pumpkin, for example. And then again, know your portions. Um, again, there is a resource at the end of this presentation that will um, guide you as to where you can go to learn more about portions. Personally, I just like to use the hand. So fist, you know, have at least two big fistfuls of veggies. Your carbs is literally the palm of your hand in thickness. And your protein, again, is the size of your palm. Any types of fats like butter or oil is literally the size of your thumb or the size of, uh, let's say, a golf ball. <clears throat> so, you know, you could use your hand or the plate to guide you. All right, swap ingredients when you can. So if you're preparing the meal or if you're adding things to your food, ask yourself, what could you do differently? So for example, butter. So I'm thinking of mashed potatoes for a lack of example. Uh, some people like to put a lot of butter in their mashed potatoes, but have you ever tried mashed potatoes with extra virgin olive oil? It's very flavorful and pumpkin, and that's the purpose of extra virgin olive oil is to add flavor to your food. And it's a monounsaturated fat, so it's not a saturated fat, so it's heart healthy. If you're using butter in baked goods, you can replace butter with pureed fruits. You can replace it, believe it or not, with pureed pumpkin. Like, let, for example, if you were making cookies, I love to use pureed pumpkin or I love, love to use yogurt. 
So you can use certain things to replace butter, depending on when, what you're making. And you can uh, reduce the calories in the food and reduce the saturated fats. Um, another substitution is let's think about cream. Some people might add sour cream or cream to their potatoes. You can tell I like mashed potatoes because that's my favorite example, but I like to use plain Greek yogurt instead of cream or sour cream. It has um, the probiotics in it. It has a lot of protein and it tastes just like sour cream. So that's another substitution. As far as sugar goes, so again, if you're making something or if you're asked to bring a dessert, for example, I'm asked to bring a dessert um, for the holiday. So I'm thinking, what can I do with fruit? So, you know, can you do something different instead of making um, sweets? Because you know, there's going to be plenty of sweets there. Could you add a little something different, uh, like a fruit plate? Or um, I, my favorite is I like to take raspberries and stuff them with dark chocolate. And people love that. Um, you don't have, when you're following a recipe, keep in mind, for example, if it calls for sugar and it says a cup of sugar, you can use 50% less sugar than what the recipe calls for. Same thing with butter or cream. So you can make substitutions or you can reduce the, um, what the recipe calls for to reduce the amount of calories introduced in the product. So swapping ingredients can be very productive. All right, and then physical activity. So why should we incorporate more physical activity? So that this is one of my challenges over the holidays. We tend to be super busy and it's very hard for me to make time to fit it in. And this is one of the challenges I plan to work on. My goal is to be as active in the winter as I am in the summer. So what I find is it's helpful to put it on my calendar. So make time, don't just take it, but make the time, put it on your calendar. And let me tell you a secret. If you put it on your calendar, even seven days a week, and you at least get in five days a week, bonus, okay? And try to aim for 30 to 45 minutes, five days a week, break it up. You know, maybe you say, okay, I'll do 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at lunch, 15 minutes at dinner, that's super helpful and just as productive. Or signing up for an event. We like to do, you know, maybe sign up for the turkey trot or sign up for the Santa shuffle. If a 5K is too much, you know, aim for something a little bit shorter or maybe do a challenge at work. I know a lot of work environments will put some challenges in place over the holidays. Uh, fit it in with family, friends, after or before dinner or while you're at work. And, um, do remember do something you enjoy if you do not like going to the gym don't go to the gym because it's going to feel like a chore okay the benefits so it helps you manage stress it helps you sleep better it will boost your confidence and it will increase your metabolism all right i'm having a hard time with these slides so make sure you get back on track remember it can be one day for most of us some of us have more than one um, social event to go to, and that's what can really build up. So maybe take the maintain, don't gain. Um, holiday challenge, which is presented to manage the holidays. Um, make sure you seek support, whether it's through a therapist or a dietitian or just friends and family, you know, let them know what you're working on. Um, again, if you struggle with emotional eating, definitely seek support with a dietitian, someone who's familiar with um, intuitive eating. This is the workbook I was mentioning. It's by Evelyn Tribal and Elise Resch. Great workbook, highly recommend it. Um, even if you aren't an emotional eater and you find that you're a, an ongoing dieter, this is a great resource. And remember to remain judgment-free. So what if you went to the social event and you allowed yourself to have cookies, ask yourself, did you follow through with your plan? So not to belabor the cookie situation, but if you in the past would have again, for a lack of better, half a dozen cookies. And this time you had three bonus. And again, don't feel guilty. Don't judge yourself. Get back on track. That's the whole thing. Don't wait till Monday. Don't wait till the new year's take the next day to get back on track. 
So here's a list of resources I was mentioning. Um, feel free to take a snapshot. There's the hunger fullness uh, link that you could look for online. And there's the portion control. It's by professionaldiabetes.org. You could definitely look that up if you needed more information on portions or the hunger fullness scale, if you felt like you needed some more tools to guide you. So that is the end of our presentation. Thank you all for attending. I know it's a lot of information in a short period of time. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday. Um, oh, cute. So I'm looking at a couple of these comments here. How to bite your tongue around annoying family. Well, you just basically put the nail in the head. Um, that's what you pretty much have to do is bite your tongue. Um, not everything that is given to me. The key really is just to go in with a positive. If that's your biggest um, concern or challenge is trying to say to yourself, how can you embrace this and go in with a positive attitude and how to perceive things in a more positive way is, is one thing that I would suggest. Yes, there, there are family members that tend to be annoying or maybe take over the conversations. Um, you know what, I think just going in and putting on a smile and listening is all you can really do. But you guys did a fantastic job with your input. I thank you for attending. And like I said, have a wonderful holiday. Enjoy the rest of your day.